and welcome to the channel giving healthcare professionals clinical guidance from a primary care perspective my name is Fernando Florido and I'm a GP in the United Kingdom today is the second episode on asthma diagnosis today's episode focuses on nice guidance on the diagnosis of asthma in children and young people there will be a third episode that will look at the diagnostic tests for adults I will put in the description below a link to download the guideline and the flowcharts as well as the link to access the YouTube version. Right, so let's get straight in. First, let's remind ourselves that we're looking at the NICE guideline Asthma Diagnosis Monitoring and Chronic Asthma Management or NG80 last updated in March 2021. A new guideline is expected in November 2023. Okay, so we're going to look at this flowchart which looks at the objective tests for asthma in children and young people aged 5 to 16. This flowchart has two sections. The first one considers the order of the tests that need to be carried out and the second one tells us about the interpretation of test results for children and young people aged 5 to 16. We're now going to look at the order of tests. The first test to do is always spirometry. So we will perform spirometry and we will consider bronchodilator reversibility testing only if the spirometry shows an obstruction. However, if a child is unable to perform objective tests, we will do as if they were under five. That is, we will treat them based on observation and clinical judgment and we will try doing the tests again every 6 to 12 months. If diagnostic uncertainty remains after spirometry and bronchodilator reversibility, we will consider fractional exhaled nitric oxide testing. And if the diagnostic uncertainty remains after nitric oxide, we will monitor peak flow variability for 2 to 4 weeks. So in summary, the order of the tests is spirometry, bronchodilator reversibility testing, fractional exhaled nitric oxide and peak flow variability. If you think that you may have difficulty remembering this order, at the end I am going to give you a little mnemonic tip that will help you remember it without a struggle. The second section looks at the interpretation of test results. But before looking at the different scenarios and starting the flowchart itself, Let's look at what the positive test result thresholds are for children. Obstructive spirometry means that the FEV1 FEVC ratio is less than 70% or below the lower limit of normal if available. In terms of fractional exhaled nitric oxide levels, 35 parts per billion or more is a positive test result for children. Bronchodilator reversibility means that there is an improvement in FVV1 of 12% or more and peak flow variability means that the variability in peak flow readings is over 20%. Right, going back to the flowchart itself, we always start with the spirometry. So the question is, does spirometry show obstruction? If the answer is no, as per the order of tests, we will do fractional exhaled nitric oxide so we will ask yourself, are the levels 35 parts per billion or more? And if the answer is no, then the next test to perform is peak flow variability. So we will ask, is there availability in peak flow readings? And then if the answer is again no, then we will say that asthma is unlikely and we will consider alternative diagnosis and referral for specialist assessment. However, if the answer to peak flow variability is yes, we will not be able to formally diagnose asthma, but we will suspect it and we will review the diagnosis after treatment. This is because although peak flow variability is highly suspicious, we will not have a second confirmatory test given that both spirometry and nitric oxide levels are normal. On the other hand, after normal spirometry, we will answer the question are nitric oxide levels 35 parts per billion or more? And if the answer is yes, then in order to be sure, we will still check for peak flow variability. And if we find that there is no variability, we will be in the same position. We will not be able to formally diagnose asthma, 
but we will suspect it and we will review the diagnosis after treatment. This is because although a high fractional exhaled nitric oxide level is highly suspicious, we will not have a second confirmatory test given that both spirometry and peak flow variability are normal. But if we find that there is peak flow variability, then we will be able to make the diagnosis of asthma because we will have two positive objective tests, fraction exhaled nitric oxide and peak flow variability. If we go back to the beginning and check the spirometry, and if we find that it indeed shows an obstruction, as per the order of tests, the next thing to do would be bronchodilator reversibility testing. And if there's no reversibility airflow obstruction, then we will move to the next test in order, which is fractional exhaled nitric oxide. And if the levels are less than 35 parts per billion, then we will not be able to diagnose asthma and we will need to refer for specialist assessment. This is because an obstructive spirometry without reversibility and with low fractional exhaled nitric oxide levels is likely to be a different type of obstructive airway disease other than asthma. However, if the fractional exhaled nitric oxide levels are 35 parts per billion or more, that will allow us to move forward and do the next test in line, which is peak flow variability. But if there is no peak flow variability, we will not be able to formally diagnose asthma, but we will suspect it and we will review the diagnosis after treatment. This is because high fractional exhaled nitric oxide levels are highly suspicious, but we do not have a second confirmatory objective test, given that there is no reversible obstruction or peak flow variability. But if we find that there is peak flow variability, then we will be able to make the formal diagnosis of asthma, given that we have two positive objective tests a high fractional excel nitric oxide level and peak flow variability. And equally, if we go back and find that spirometry shows an obstruction, and we can also confirm that there is reversible airflow obstruction, then that will also be enough, and we'll also be able to make a formal diagnosis of asthma. So in summary, we will do the tests always in the same order. Spirometry, bronchodilator reversibility, fractional exhaled nitric oxide and peak flow variability. Or, if you want to remember easily, sailing boat found paddling. Or, spirometry, S for sailing, bronchodilator reversibility, B for boat, fractional exhaled nitric oxide, F for found, and peak flow variability, P for paddling. And when we interpret tests, we're likely to exclude asthma if we don't have at least one positive objective test. For example, because spirometry shows no obstruction, fractional exhaled nitric oxide is normal, there's no variability in peak flow readings, or because there is no bronchodilator reversibility and the fractional exhaled nitric oxide is normal, even if spirometry shows obstruction. Note here that obstruction on spirometry is not considered a positive test for asthma unless there is bronchodilator reversibility. So, in these cases, we will have to refer or investigate further. We will diagnose asthma if there are two positive objective tests, for example, because either spirometry shows obstruction and bronchodilator reversibility is positive, Please note that obstruction and spirometry is considered a positive test for asthma here, precisely because the bronchodilator reversibility is positive. Or, fractional exhaled nitric oxide is high and there is variability in peak flow readings, even if bronchodilator reversibility is negative. Or, fractional exhaled nitric oxide is high and there is variability in peak flow readings, even if spirometry shows no obstruction. So in these cases, we will diagnose asthma. And finally, we will suspect asthma, but will not be able to diagnose it if there's only one positive objective test. For example, if either only fractional exhale nitric oxide is positive or only peak flow variability is positive. Therefore, in these cases, we will suspect asthma, treat it and review the diagnosis after treatment. Right, so this is it. We have finished reviewing this flowchart. 
I hope that you have found it useful and that you now watch the next episode.